Lauren Lanning will be here to talk about taking his designs to the next level and maybe to just some dirt on EA Games. Stay tuned. Attack of the Attack. Attack of the all right, our first guest is the creator of the hit series, Oddworld. Need I say more? Please welcome Lauren Lanning to the show. Lauren, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, first off, let me ask uh, very quite simply, uh, what the hell? What is going on? <laughs> are, you, are you quitting the industry? Are you drowning kittens in a bucket? Are you, are you lashing out at everybody? Are you going to go postal on EA? What, what is going on with you? Because I'm seeing reports all across the board uh, well, with different things. Sure, and I appreciate you asking. Right. Uh, you know, You're not drowning kittens in a bucket. We're, we're not drowning kittens. Okay, just making we've, sure. That was a spawn rumor. We got past stuff. that, Okay. and we've had therapy, and we're all good now. Good, good. But so, what is going on? Yeah, well, what, what's happened is we shut down the internal development, uh, the internal game production facility in San Luis Obispo. And uh, there's a multitude of different reasons for that. But most importantly, we want to focus on a lot of new ventures. And when you're involved in game production today, if you run your own facility, you are absolutely consumed by that facility. Right. And it really narrows your options. And uh, it's really an exciting time for us. And when Sherry McKenna and I started this company, we started it as a property development company. And that's what we want to do. And we want to blaze these properties ac across multiple forms of media. And when you look at what's happening in the world today, it's really an exciting time. Well, absolutely. So, but now, now the, qu the question here is that you said you're... you're when, when you say something like that, like, hey, we want to branch out to other mediums, yeah. it, it, people take that as if, as if you're abandoning video games. Are you planning on doing that, or will video games still be in your future? We're not abandoning video games. We're abandoning internal production. Okay. So we don't see ourselves setting up a facility and continuing to run that and continuing to feed that very hungry, you know, big, fat, you know, crying right. baby that is, uh, you know, has a voracious appetite. But now there's, there's countless, countless Oddworld fans out there. I mean, it's, the well, franchise has been successful, the, the, the biggest understatement of the world is saying that but are you going to outsource Oddworld to India I mean how will there will there be another Oddworld game made well, uh, that that kind of you know that kind of depends I mean uh, what we're looking at a lot of our energy is on the Oddworld CG motion picture ah. and if if that goes the way that we hope then it's you know the synergy today with multimedia is that if there's a big movie that's applicable to games you're going to see simultaneous releases so uh, a lot of our energy is focused on the motion picture, and if that happens, then uh, you know you could see a lot of possibilities with an Oddworld game. But what we intend to do is look at more of the outsourcing models and co-relationships across the industry. I mean, we're storytellers, we're character creators, and we're innovators. That's what we do. We're not. Uh, there are people in the industry that build technology better mm. than we do. You know, we understand it. We've built some good sure. stuff. But there are people that really sink their teeth into this stuff, and they're as passionate about technology as we are about property development, right. about stories So, and like, characters. look, we, we know how to do the characters. We got the CG. Yep. You guys have the tech, so uh, here. Yeah, so there's a lot of relationships that can work that way. In the game industry right now, uh, it's kind of broken in a number of different ways. It's, it's sort of broken in the third-party, independent third-party developer-publisher relationships, uh, especially as the costs continue to rise for next gen in the terms of those uh, uh, relationships. Right. And also, you know, we build a lot of technology in the games industry that is actually applicable towards other mediums sure. like television production. I mean, game engines today with a little tailoring could be made to revolutionize the CG tele oh, yeah. I, television. I loaded up Half-Life 2 and I thought it was a, I thought it was a movie. For, there were moments where I was like, this looks like an ultra stylized movie. It's a great, it's a great example of that. Right. And so, so I wanna, I'm sorry, yeah. I, I want to I get to, to something else that, okay. that I read in an interview uh, regarding electronic arts. Sure. So uh, you were talking about like the push or lack thereof for you know Oddworld Strangers. Yeah. Uh, my question is, do you think that they they didn't give it enough attention and they, they they gave more attention to a game like Need for Speed Underground? I mean, what was what what happened with EA? Well, I think I think it, it, what happened with EA is sort of indicative of the state of the industry today. In that, uh, no, I don't feel they gave it enough attention. But uh, at the same time, we're not bitching about it. You know, this is life in the game business. Sure. And it, uh, but has it has it strained any sort of relationship between them? Or are you now? Well, saying, I don't no, think so. Sorry. I mean, as I read some of the online press that says, you know, Lauren Landings that you know says these bad yeah. things about EA, I go, no, I didn't. I and imagine throwing up, like you know, know shotguns into your trunk and building <laughs> yeah. Molotov cocktails. No, I mean, EA is a huge organization. 
And any time you have huge organizations that are dealing with very small creative organizations, there's different types of, you know, uh, uh, things that either party might like different ways. But uh, the reality is, is that we didn't, we didn't get the, we built the Xbox version. Right. And uh, EA is really a multi-platform company. And they'll be the first to tell you that, you know. So when uh, it didn't work out with the PS2 conversion, it, they pulled out a lot of the support for bringing it to the market. Now, the way the marketplace is today is that if you don't have that visibility, if, you, if those guys in the stores don't know that this game is coming right. and aren't telling the buyers that this is really something to look right. forward to and they don't have some, you know, POP stuff to put up on the shelves and stuff, uh, it's just not going to fly. And the game you, didn't You need really the guys fly. on the phone nagging every color saying, you can pre-order your, pre your copy of Oddworld. And <laughs> then they're like, no, I just don't ask a question. Well, some of that, you know, what it really takes is bucks, right? I mean, it, unless you're like Bioware, who has a, Bioware is a great example of a company that has a, a close community uh, of, of people in on the web right. where they inform people that their new games are coming out uh, you can do that in a better way but uh, it, for the most part it takes money to raise awareness and that's why films have 50 million dollar marketing budgets on sure you know and uh, so those budgets got cut, and therefore Stranger didn't find his way into as many homes uh, as we think he could have. But that's the reality of the game business, you know? And that's one of the things that, that is... Uh, is that one of the reasons you think you, you're kind of straying away from it or branching out no, to other opportunities no, it's, because it's, of that reality? It's indicative of, of the climate of the game business today. Uh, and looking at that, if you look at yourself and you go, we tell stories, we create characters, we understand computer graphics, we understand filmmaking, we understand television. I mean, we came from television and film before we got into games, right. Sherry McKenna and I. If you understand those things and you take a look at the global entertainment media, you know, the, the, the opportunities in digital media globally across films, television, and games, mm -hmm. you, you kind of ask yourself, why, why am I dedicating all my energy to this single cause? I could be spreading it a right. lot more intelligently and probably be more gratified in telling better stories. And to us, that's what it's about. It's about the stories and the characters. Okay, now finally, real quickly, uh, rumor has it you're working on some new technology that can help out other mediums. Can you care to well, talk about uh, that a little bit? Uh, what we, what we, when, when we build game engines, we sink an enormous amount of money into them. We all do. Sure. And what we're looking at is tailoring those game engines to be delivery systems for linear CG television, even at HD quality. So when you look what happens, it's what's happening in the world, you know, India, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, China, for example, we have these rapidly emerging middle classes. People are just getting TVs for the first time right. in their family heritage, you know, except we're talking about a half a billion TVs. Right? And these places are rapidly scaling up on how many channels they're delivering to these people. So we're talking, you know, more people than live in the United States are just getting turned on to televisions, and they want to see content, right? Now, we have game technology that we've invested millions of dollars into. I mean, as an industry, we all do this. And if, you're, if you understand some of the needs of television, you could be tailoring that technology to actually start creating the Hanna-Barberas, the Deeks, and the Sabans of the 21st century. Now, that's really exciting stuff, using right. game technology. But you have to understand games, television, film, and all those things to really synergize that stuff. And there's not a lot of people that do today. So there's huge opportunities there. And that's part of the reason why we're excited about freeing up some time to be able to pursue them. All right. Well, we're excited to see what you have uh, on the horizon, well, cool. Lauren. Thank you so much for coming hey, on the my show pleasure. clearing that up. We appreciate it. Excellent. Still ahead, we take three lefts and a right, and somehow we end up smack in the middle of the urban art scene. And D-tipper Kevin Rose shows us all how to encrypt our porn. That's important. You don't want to miss it.